Greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining me on my broadcast, Your Voice, which my show deals with hip hop, politics, spirituality, and health awareness, also politics. This show is the CNN of the streets, the grassroots, where the first is last and the last shall be first. Without any further delay, I want to bring on my guest, longtime friend to my broadcast, Mr. Gary Axelbank from Bronx Talk. The Larry King of the Bronx. You know I had to pause for that. Thank you for joining me on my broadcast. Clyde, it's just such a pleasure. Thank you. Listen, we're going to talk about so many different topics. Let's give the audience a little synopsis of who you are and how <laughs> long you have been at BronxNet before even BronxNet was even named BronxNet. Well, it's a, you know, there's probably not enough fingers to count how oh. many years. Okay. And um, I, I was a radio DJ actually for many, many years. For oh, 15 years, I was in the music business. I worked uh, in stations in Maryland and Delaware. And uh, then it came back to my home in New York, always born and raised in the Bronx. And I worked up in Westchester at what is now the peak, 107.1, but at that time it was WRNW. I worked for Howard Stern up there, and uh, he was the Howard Stern, of course. He was the program director, mm -hmm. and then when he left, I got the job. I think I was like 19. I was 24 years old, and I became the program director of a rock station, which was pretty incredible, uh, which I did for a couple of years. Um, and then uh, kind of one thing led to another. I worked at WDHA in Dover, New Jersey, and I was the nighttime guy, and I was uh, the Duke of Darkness, mm. and I would drive out <laughs> to New Jersey for an hour every night. And then um, uh, one day I was teaching broadcasting at a school in Manhattan, and one day somebody came by and said, we're starting a cable network in the Bronx. And explosions oh. went off in my head, and a light, I mean, it was like light bulbs, wow, and I was like, wow, that's unbelievable. And um, one thing led to another, and I got involved because it's my ho it's my home. It's mm -hmm. what I really care about. And um, in 1994, when BronxNet debuted the station, I had literally the first uh, feature package on this. Like when they said, "Okay, here's BronxNet, July 1st, 1994, and here's the kinds of features we're going to do." I had a feature on a uh, chess champion, a national chess champion, a young man who came from the Bronx. And that was the, f and they used that as an example of what BronxNet was going to be about for a tournament. Do you still have those archives? I certainly have that. That I was a wonderful. Oh, piece. you should have brought that here, oh, but this was we, a surprise. We, well, don't worry I about it. So anyway, the point is that Go was ahead. 1994. We're now in 2020. I'm in my 25th year of Bronx Talk, and uh, literally been with the station from the first day. And, you have been doing a lot. You brought so much to Bronx, and I see you have a Thank lot you. of heavy hitters on your show. A lot of these elected officials come on your show. Sometimes when you're broadcasting, and I'm watching it at home, I say, Gary, you got to hit them hard. <laughs> sometimes I want to reach through that phone and crack them over the head with those scriptures and say, hey, Gary, ask these questions. So, Don't so, let them get away from so me. So here's, here's the balance, yes. okay? And okay. I, I had to get myself an education because there was a period of time about 2000, 2005, and you'll remember because we became closer friends uh, during that mm -hmm. period of time, I had a morning show mm -hmm. on BronxNet, which was the precursor, which was the one that led to Open, which is now a very successful morning program for BronxNet. But I had a lot of time to editorialize, and I editorialized about a lot of things, mm -hmm. and it got me in trouble, and meaning politicians and other people. and I. And I learned after that experience, because there was a lot, I, we don't have to go into some of the specifics, mm -hmm. but there was a lot of negative stuff that happened. Not only people say, well, we don't like your show, it was like stuff that happened to me personally. And um, so now I've learned how to ask good questions, get the answers I want, but not kind of make people upset. So, so you know, yeah, we, we try to 
do as much as we can to ask them whatever we can. No, that shows. It comes across that way. Thank you. you have your questions well organized. I see you always going like this and wrapping up your show. Now, when you was in that room, the 8x10 in Lehman College, in that small room, you mm. would have guests come on. And I remember, because I was in the green room that okay, we so had. So this was, for people who don't know, it was Bronx Talk yes. AM. Yes, And yes. it was on Monday through yes. Friday. Yes. Five days a week, we did two hours every day. Do say. In, in a little room. Like, it was like the beginning, it was actually after Howard Stern created the radio show on TV, we did something very similar. So go ahead, ask your question. I just wanted to define our terms. Yeah, well, you know, before I forget, I want to let all our viewers know that you could call in and join us, Gary ah. Action Bank, 718-715-1159. Call in and see, you know, just chime in with us, make us feel at home. This is about 25 years Bronxton has been in existence, haven't it? Uh, Bronx that since 1994 and and you know I really appreciated that it says your voice yes. because um, that's the the theme of Bronx that is your voice your views your vision which Absolutely. is something I, I, I endorse and take seriously every day and Bronx net saves lives this program and our programs hit a lot of viewers at home and it helps inform them with information that they probably wouldn't get from anywhere no, else. No, nobody else tells our story like we do. Absolutely. You know? um, but you were going to ask something about that morning show. You said when you were in that 8 by 10 studio. So yes. We would be in the green room. Our green room was just basically a closet. <laughs> a closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the green wonderful. room and the studio is the size of a closet. <laughs> it just shows you how much we have evolved. So many people have came to BronxNet, uh, to your show, Gary Axel Bank, and it's, it's very interesting. And it's, and it's so many years. It's crazy. A time, Gary, and you always had creative ideas, and that's why I was so attached to you, because okay. you always opened up something. You had an idea, you say, hey, Clyde, you know, what do you think about this? You start throwing things around, and next, you know, things happen. The, you know, here's, here's what really the theory was, okay. uh, and which I still deal with uh, today, and that is in a borough of 1.4 million people, mm. every person, and you know how complex we are as people, Bronx people. Mm -hmm. Every person has a story to tell. And so it did, it, in a way, yes, you want to have, you know, senators, state senators, or whoever on mm -hmm. your program. But somebody who's a creator, somebody who works in their living room making pottery, or somebody uh, who, mm. who has a daycare center mm. who's doing something special with kids, right. or an after school center, that is a. A, a tremendous story, and if you take that person and highlight it, that, that's how you build community. That's what I sense from you. That's what I picked up from you. Somebody could just be a general person that has a great idea waiting for somebody to discover them or acknowledge the work that they're doing, and here you come along and bring this out of them. This is important, and then you don't know what they could be doing for the future. Listen, call us. Call in 718-715-1159. Gary Axelbank, we have a legend, a pioneer here <laughs> from our signature channel, 67 on BronxNet. There you go, BronxNet has four channels. So I do want to add um, ab about but signature. That, that, I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, about that um, program, you know, so we were in this right. little room, which you remember, you could say eight by 10, I don't even know what size, mm -hmm. that's probably larger than it really was. And we had these little automatic cameras, a lot mm -hmm. of people may not know, mm -hmm. they were like the size of cigarette boxes. Mm -hmm. And they were there, and I used to control the cameras with a little TV remote control. Interesting. And, and so I, you know, I'd push position one, and it would do that. And then when I would turn this way, it would be this camera, and I would change the thing. And people didn't know that I was actually switching. But my reason for bringing that up is okay. here at the Mercy College studio, mm -hmm. we just got robotic cameras. Absolutely. But they're at a whole other level no. than Gary like this with his little remote control, because they're real, real cameras. Up. And that, that just shows the 25-year growth growth of BronxNet television. Gary Axelbank introduced mm -hmm. something called Sound of the Bronx. Mm. Um, what made you come up with this creative idea? Uh, you want one, can I hold it up? You want to hold it up? Oh, yes. Let me hold this up. There you go. go can I show this on here? I'm this sure is, they this can. This CD right here. So that CD Gary is, is, um, was the Bronx Music Volume 1, and on, on the back it lists, uh, we, we created this CD along with uh, Michael Max Nobby at, at Bronx Night, who was the executive director. And over the years, now that, I looked it up, Clyde. It's so long ago that I mm -hmm. can't believe it. It was 2004, 
So that's 15 years ago that that, <sighs> that, that, that was created. But I had still already been doing 10 years of, of television. Yes. And along the way, we had had many of the great Bronx musicians appear on the mm -hmm. show. And the idea was to put a CD together of all, uh, as many of the people as we could get on there. And that, that's where, let me, let me hold on to yeah. it. Then, I, I don't know wh which my camera is over here. There, there it is. But the, the um, because uh, usually I'm sitting in that yeah. chair, so I don't know where I'm going. The yet. roles has been reversed. But this this cover was created yeah. by Tats, Tats crew, crew. By Tats Crew, and it was a little caricature of me sitting at my desk, my TV desk, with all the Bronx music around me. That's what. Uh, that's and you had a collaboration of artists on here. How did you come together to get all of these people? Well, I these mean. were people who had been on our show: Dave Valentine, Willie Colon, Africa Bambata. Cool Clyde, mm. uh, the the uh, Bronx Re Book? the Marsania Review, which is one one of the best stories mm. we ever did on Bronx Talk. Um, uh, the the late Arthur Cryer, who was a bass singer, mm -hmm. um, was involved in many of the the doo-wop groups in Marsania mm. that uh, really fueled a whole generation of music in in the Bronx. And so he we brought the old doo-wop guys together and went back to that street wow. corner and did a show on the street corner where they used to sing. And they sang Shaboom and a whole bunch of stuff. So that's how I got the people. I just knew them over the years. They Gary, <laughs> with this smile, I was thinking about Dave Valentine because he was on here The as late well. Dave Valentine. Yeah, what a peace. great guy. One of the best people around. I know for something in your heart and the way you're smiling, your chemistry has come across, you're up to something about making a volume two. So that's what <laughs> you think, I, I, get, I haven't thought about it because I've been very busy, but uh, I suppose it's possible. Uh, we haven't had as many music guests on Bronx Talk as mm -hmm. we used to because BronxNet has them on other programs okay. and I don't generally want to duplicate, you know, you want to do, so mm -hmm. I've been sticking lately to the straight talk um, but I suppose it's possible. I don't know. Anyway, what I, can I talk about that for one more second? Sure, come on. So what I Feel loved, home, uh, Gary, what I on. loved about this was a couple of people. Cool Clyde mm -hmm. is one of them. Submitted original, created a track mm -hmm. for this CD, and yeah. you called it the sound of the Bronx. Um, I d to this day, nothing says the Bronx to me like that track. So I, I don't know if we could play it, um, or but people will, will want to know about it, but it was... I guess my program producer in the back could actually play a little sample of that, Sound of the Bronx. The Sound of the Bronx. Yeah. It's the Sound of the Bronx. And, and I don't know if you remember, when we debuted it on the air, Mm -hmm. I got, I, I started crying. I thought it was so beautiful because you talk about Gun Hill Road and yes, yes. Fremont, and, and Tremont Avenue, wow. right, and Freeman Street. And, 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 and I was like, wow, this is the sound of the Bronx. Absolutely. I think they have a little technical issues back oh, there, but they're working on it. Whatever. Anyway, I, I'm glad that we brought it up because this is something that we share in common. 15 years, Clyde. Where did the time go? Time flies, <laughs> but I'm thinking back. When Gary went around the first time, your show, Bronx Talk. Yes. And in the neighborhood were the first two shows that I came on when I first came really? to Bronx. Now, now, so remind me, you were kind of a regular on um, on the morning show. I, I I'm so sorry. I wish I remember. That's so. Listen, Gary, time <laughs> flies by more. so 15 quick. Fifteen years, yes, man. Yes, time goes by. I remember when I was at. 98.7 kids slash hot yes. 97. Right. And the late Bob Slade, which was a news program director, yes, said to yes, me, yes, yes. Clyde, um, you need to go to BronxNet. And oh, you need really? to speak to Jane and Gary Axelbank. Really? And I was so surprised. How did he get your information? Because I got a big mouth. <laughs> and he <laughs> asked me, and from that point, that led me to you. Wow. And from that, I came on your show and I brought various guests on your show from Africa Bambada, Professor X, Shannon, I mean, I ran Barkley. So many people have came. Really, to I ran show. was on? Yes, he wow, was. I wow. wish I had those clippings. Well, we, I had the had boxing had... gloves around. Charlie Chase from the Cold Crust Brothers. So many well, people came. We, we had uh, I ran Barkley on Bronx Talk over the summer because he was put up in the Bronx Walk of Fame. Yes. So. Um, Anyway, and, and you, so then you ultimately, then you spun records for Open, right? Absolutely, yes. I was actually a DJ for Rena Valentine. For Rena, right, right. And right. also Dr. Bob Lee. So Rena actually made her debut on BronxNet 
on my morning show. Look at that. On, Look on, at that. On, I uh, never knew that. Yeah. And, and what happened was then the show ended and um, uh, she stayed on and she, she now, of course, does Friday mornings on open. Interesting. So that, and that, yeah. But that started, they kind of knew her through the fact that I had brought her on a couple of times on uh, the morning show. Also, to carry your story on, we brought you down to 98.7 Kiss. I believe they have some pictures of you in the studio in Hot 97. I, I remember. <laughs> Carrie, was the you pull us? We were both yes. there. Yes. We were both there. And I was really very appreciative. You know, I, I don't, re to be honest, That's I don't, okay. I was, again, 2004, so time it's a long by. time. So I don't remember a lot of the specifics, but the one thing I do remember is there was a round table discussion mm -hmm. yes. of, um, uh, I guess me and a, a couple of the other yeah, commentators. Yeah, Cutman. And I remember, Cutman, yes. Yes, the And I remember crew. feeling very comfortable about yes. talking about urban issues yes. with people who were pretty well informed. I, well, I this, is, this is good, Gary, and this is the reason why I brought you on. So that way we could actually talk, and I want you to feel comfortable. I'm going to bring up a couple of things, okay? And just feel comfortable. And because I may ask a question that may pertain to uh, people of color, feel comfortable. <laughs> feel <laughs> like you're at home with your wife, and Dude, you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I'm a Bronx boy. <laughs> Say what I'm, you feel. Yeah. Please don't hold I'm, back. I'm a Bronx boy, and and I've said this a number of times. You can't be racist and live mm. in the Bronx. Mm. You can't, because if you see color, you can't even go to the grocery store and buy yourself a container. Tell that to our Which one is your camera, Gary? <laughs> I think it's camera. No, no, you, you, can't, you can't go to the grocery mm. store. If you have prejudice, who are you mm. going to talk to? Right, absolutely. And, and, and it doesn't mean doesn't, I, whether you're black or white or right. Italian or Jewish or Dominican or you know, Arabic or Africa. I mean, yeah. I could list them all there. We all here, and that to me is the bow of the Bronx. And so, yeah, I'm comfortable. I, I'm comfortable with my That's Bronx the people. Flavor. Do we have any are. pictures when Gary was at Hot 97 and oh, 98.7 Kids in the studio? All right, there are. There, they exist somewhere. Oh, look, oh, that's at Rosedale Park now. Oh, that, is that me? Do you remember? That's you, Gary. Oh, my goodness. That's the last time I'm taking pictures with shorts on. Oh, wow. Uh, but but I, I remember that. You you used to throw those concerts in Rosedale Park, right? Absolutely. And it was like every summer. Every summer, called Raising Kings and Queens. And I remember... Oh, there you go again. With wow. TWU, Local 100, beside wow. you. Wow, and I remember I was on stage with Wendy Williams. Oh, do we do, do, do we, we have, have that picture? That was, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, we ha and, and, you know, again, that, that, that is the sound of the Bronx. That is the, the vision of the Bronx. Yeah, Gary, there's Gary right there. I wish they could bring that picture down a little bit lower. So, <laughs> oh, oh that, do you remember that picture when we came on Bronx Time? I do. With all the legends, we had Grandmaster Cass, MC Sham, myself, Melly Mel. I, I ran into Break Melly out. Mel the other night. Night at uh -huh. an event, and I reminded him of that show, and that we we talked very openly about what it was like when they were coming up, and when they were making, when you all were making the, the origins. Of Gary, it. that was an interesting show. You have Rock and Robin with so many of us together. Cur Sit was Curtis there? Curtis? No, Blunt? Curtis didn't Curtis come to that. I had one. him on another night. Then, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Let's see. If we have any more pictures? We're going down memory lane. Wow. <laughs> Wow, interesting. <laughs> I haven't thought or seen any of those in a... In oh, look at Gary movie. right there. Now, that's... Okay, that's us at Hot 97, right? That's correct. Right. You had some chilling stories, Gary. That's so interesting. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, let's go... I'm there. sure by now I forgot what they were. <laughs> no, there's a whole bunch of... There yeah. you go, in the studio. Gives you know, Gary at 90.7. Well, that goes back to what my own personal professional roots mm -hmm. are. I was a radio DJ, so if you bring me to a radio studio... Of course, now they call... Hey, look it, at you. There they go. Now, <laughs> yeah, me with my mouth open. There's a surprise. But... but um, uh, it, now they call them podcasts, okay. right? Wow. It's the same thing, you know. They sit behind the thing and they, and they talk about all different things. That's fun. That was interesting. So, that was fun. currents of Go. events what do you today. Got? What do you got? I'm ready. What do you think about President 45? Do you think he'll be reelected? Well, I don't know that I could predict, if anybody could predict what will happen. Um, I don't usually talk about politics from a personal point of view because I have to deal with it. But the outrageousness of this president is so far and so deep and so drastic that if in this situation, in other words, I wouldn't do it on Bronx Talk because I have to mm -hmm. moderate stuff, but I am so horrified by what I see and hear from this president that I can't help but answer in that way that, that um, 
it, it, this is, in my lifetime, maybe the worst thing that's ever happened to America, is that he's become president and so many people believe the things that he says. Many people have believed in their hearts that he killed that militant leader uh, so that could take the eyes off of him being impeached yeah, so he could have a chance and, and in to a way be pushed it did. back into In a way it did, um, but there are so many implications of that. And listen, he wouldn't be the first president to do something like that. Mm. Bill Clinton did it. I mean, there's a movie called Wag the Dog, which is uh, about, about, crea that. about creating a, you know, a, a, a phony incident to take, uh, take people's minds off corruption. But you got you got to you got to really plan these things. You got to involve everybody. You, you know, when when John Kennedy um, was dealing with the Cuban Missile Crisis, mm -hmm. he called everybody into the White House. He called Republicans in. He said, "Listen, I may not agree with you, but I want to know what you're thinking, so he could incorporate that before you take the security of our country, you know, and uh, and, and put it at risk or challenged." And um, and, and so that's one thing. The other thing that really just j disturbs me greatly, which is in the news right now, mm -hmm. while all this is going on, the impeachment is going on, and also um, uh, obviously the, the issue in Iran, which is not over. I mean, it's quiet. It seems quiet at the moment. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, at the same time, he's, he's going back on environmental regulations. Mm -hmm. There's been more than 100 regulations that have been turned back under this administration, and the most drastic of them is a 50-year-old uh, rule, which we all live by. If they're going to build a road, you need an environmental mm -hmm. statement to see who's, who and what's going to be affected. He's changing the law so they will not have to do that. And so if they want to lay a pipeline, it's on the front page of the Times uh, yesterday and today, mm. if they want to lay a pipeline through farms or whatever, they're not going to have to study and go through an environmental study. What, what bothers me more than the act is that the people who will be affected <laughs> are people who support him. Yeah. And if they're going to be displaced or if their farms are going to be overturned or if their land is going to be spoiled by something, by a roadway, by an airport, mm -hmm. they're not going to have to do an environmental study. That doesn't, that's the kind of thing Are that you in favor for term limits? <sighs> um, it's a complicated issue. I don't have a real answer on that. Um, here, here, I'll give you the pros and cons because I've discussed it on mm -hmm. Bronx Talk any number of times. And we now have it in the city mm -hmm. council. The pros are that you get people who are in office um, and, they're, and, they get, and then they get lazy mm -hmm. or they don't care because it becomes kind of an automatic reappointment, so Interesting. to speak. Interesting. Do we say. Have a lot, right? We have a lot of that. Interesting. And you want to move them out and we want to encourage young people and, and new voices. There's no question. On the other hand, there is something to be said. Let's say in the case of a president's impeachment, for somebody who's been in Congress for 20 years and went through the Bill Clinton impeachment, mm -hmm. or even as far back as Nixon, you want that voice to be involved in that. So if you cut that person out, you may have people who have good young ideas, but they don't have the, the, experience? the experience to know and this is how we did it before, that worked, that didn't work, let's try it this way. So I don't personally have a, an answer yes right, or no, but right. those are the Because that's a twofold, because some, two some of the experienced so-called seasoned people, the GOP party, may not, they may be stubborn, they may be rebellious, and you need new, fresh ideas to come in and and change the way right. things are going. And on the other hand, um, you have um, you know long-standing congressmen, uh, Jerry Nadler, Elliot mm -hmm. Engel. I mean, people who have been in Congress for a long time. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have their expertise and experience, you know, you you really need some of those kinds of voices. And listen, I, that's not even a part. As far as I'm concerned, not a partisan thing. You you, it's the same thing in, in any political party. Mm -hmm. You want new blood. I'm sure Republicans want to bring young people up and have them have a chance. On the other hand, there is something to be said for that experience. So, in my answer, I don't have an answer for that. In that case, I'm glad to be the moderator. I'm glad to be the guy who, who balances them all. No, interesting, Gary. And that was very, uh, I, I like how you uh, delivered that statement. Now, I'm going to switch to another topic. Go to it. Coastal evacuation routes that you see in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. In the event that we have a sort of crisis of flooding, you see the signs posted up all over the place saying we should 
head to Lehman College. <laughs> okay, in the event that we have an emergency like that, is this thing <laughs> going to be organized? Uh, let me tell you, you something. Yeah, you say we let have me, one point. Uh, the how many million I'm people? Laughing, one of the biggest problems in the Bronx we have is traveling east to west, and okay. west to east in the borough. If you're at Hunts Point where there is a danger, what are you going to take a bus to get to Lehman College? Well, this is the reason why <laughs> in I'm bringing this up. In the middle of a flood. <laughs> This is important. You have a lot of heavy hitters on your show, and this is something that maybe should be discussed. And I also think in terms of once the people arrive at Lehman College, would it be organized? Would they have enough bathrooms? Would they have enough toothbrushes, toothpaste? You're going to put people in the apex? I mean, Pe I'm not sure where People they're... would just lose their mind. And what about people with body odors? What are well, you going to do? Well, I mean, It'll is, be chaos. People live, in, people live in their shelters all the time. We, we, we know that uh, people have lived together. And in a time of crisis, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. But I don't think that the emergency evacuation plans have been well um, uh, crafted. If you look at the latest information, there's concerns that Hunts Point wasn't dealt with originally in, in, the, in the organization. Uh, all those East mm. Bronx uh, uh, communities, whether it be Edgewater Cliff and Throgs Neck and all that, those are all, uh, City Island certainly, all in danger. One would think if you were crafting an, a, you know, a coastal flooding plan, mm -hmm. uh, that would be first on your list. It's been last, and uh, the concern is is real. I think. No question about it. Call us. You could call in seven one eight. Join us seven one five one one five nine seven one eight seven one five one one five nine. Chime go. in, Gary. This is a big story, Here we and go. this is something that I knew Can I give about a drum roll you. For this? Let's give a big drum roll, <laughs> and Gary never let this go. We're going to talk about the Bronx water filtration system. Where <laughs> is that? That was your baby, Gary. Well, um, and frankly, um, among the, the controversies that um, helped to end my morning show, because um, they, there was a strong feeling that I was too strong a voice in opposition, because I was editorializing it. Uh, for a little background of people, um, the city wanted to filter uh, what is about 20% of its water that comes through the Croton system, mm -hmm. and there were even questions whether they should filter it, mm -hmm. and the question was where to build a, uh, a, a treatment plant. Mm -hmm. uh, we had believed, and I went up to visit the location, which was up in Eastview, New York, about 15, 20 miles north of the city, that was the best place because the water could be filtered there and go to the Westchester towns and mm. also feed the Bronx. But uh, the city had other plans and ultimately decided to build a 45-acre uh, hole in the ground and built it under Van Cortland Park. It was the first time the city had ever alienated parkland for an industrial project of that size. And we um, protested it. It was planned for $992 million. At this moment, the price tag is over $3.5 billion, which is all our tax money. And when water rates went up, um, probably in the 2008 to 2013, the, the, around that period of time, it was stated that the reason there were 11% increase in water rates was because mm. they had to pay for what I just explained. The other thing that happened, they said it would take like five to seven years to complete, um, and uh, they didn't complete it till it's nine it? years or mm. 12 years. Anyway, where it's at right now, and I'm very glad you asked, as part of that project, the beautiful Jerome Park Reservoir, which mm. is actually right near where I live, as okay. a matter of fact, there, it's split in half. People okay. will notice it's split in half. The, the northern half, what the city is, is literally today saying, they're going to empty it and leave it empty for all time. So that means it's just going to be a concrete pit. All the people that overlook it, it destroys their view, obviously. Wa water and open space is... Could they put something in that space? Well, well they, sh they should put water in it. Would be the Well, absolutely. That yeah. would be the idea. Yeah, That's what it is. And so, so there are groups fighting it. And what we have noted, and, and you're about to see a lot of talk about it because they're literally just now beginning. But what you're about to see is people uh, complaining about it. Mm it, it makes no sense. It's, the point is that after 20 years of still debating this mm. thing, rather than work with communities, mm -hmm. say, these are our plans, let's work together, mm -hmm. they just give you the plan and then you got to go through legal or whatever and try and fight it. Sad. 
Absolutely. This is rapid fire. I'm just going to be asking you different questions. And this is what I told you I, I like how you, I like how you articulate this, but this is something that's really um, very important, the next topic that I'm going to bring up. Mm -hmm. Audit made it machines. Are you for it or are you against it? When I go to um, Target and I'm standing online and I go off into the Target on, uh, at, at Marble Hill, uh, and it's a wonderful store, by the way, and I, mm -hmm. I believe it's maybe their largest selling store. You know, the minute it launched, they're like the whole housing project, mm -hmm. everybody in the region uses it. When I go there, I will never go to the automated checkout. Never, because I, two things. Number one, you know me. I'd rather hang out and say hello to the cashier uh, okay. and say hello to the, the young man or woman who's there, get a sense of who they are, you know, I just love mm. interacting with people, and uh, you know me, I talk with people, and so, th and that's real important to our society, is that we talk to each other, and that th the cashier will look at you and say, hey, how are you? Nice to see you. Oh, what's the price on this, or I couldn't find a price, and you're talking to somebody, instead of you're dealing with a machine, and you, that to me, there's no money in that, but I, I don't use them. I don't you use mentioned them that there was no money in that, from well, well that, my next point is there's money in the jobs. <coughs> we got to have right, There you go. Come kids. on, Gary. And instead of seeing five uh, uh, automated machines, I want five kids to have jobs. Uh, okay, okay. There, there's no question. Okay. I meant there's no money in the interaction yes. and the value of that. Yes, How do you yes. put a, 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 yes. a dollar amount? But certainly in terms of getting kids jobs and getting young people, and not only kids, but and, and the way jobs are now and people, you know, want to feed their families and whatever, I don't want to even characterize who they might be. We need more of those people. And the companies that, um, uh, that CVS, Target, any of the other, um, ShopRite, any of the other companies, those are the people with the money to pay for the jobs. So, uh, so my answer is I, I never use them. I never like them. I once wrote to CVS and said, hey, you know, instead of five automated machines, I want and the other thing, since you got me going, it's a, a pet peeve of mine. When I go into Rite Aid, let's say, which I use on mm -hmm. 238th Street, uh, right off Broadway, when I go in there and I see a line and one cashier and four empty registers, that drives me nuts. We should have three Bronxites standing there with jobs, working with people, moving the line, and then we're all standing there waiting. This is happening, Gary, everywhere. all over. It's You're crazy. talking about when you go across the bridge and tunnels now. I like the fact that we could go through quickly, With easy pay. but where are these people yeah. being placed? This, I think, started with music. You had bands early in the early days. Now you have, everything is drum machines now. You know, everything that's an is, interesting point. Everything is computerized. And what they're also trying to do is allow automated robots to drive Buses. Now let me ask you something. I'm going to come back at you because mm -hmm. you're you're a, a founder of hip hop and were there right at the beginning. Was the use of turntables as instruments the beginning of that? And now, I, and I'm not blaming the hip hop guys because we know one of the reasons that it started was because they took the music out of the schools, so they stopped teaching the kids the trombone and the bass and the cello and everything else. So and Bronx people, we got to play. So we came up with this business. But to me, that was the beginning of it and saying, wow, we can, rather than um, uh, you know, have a guy playing the beat, we could sample the beat. Interesting. It's all that, part of the, the Yeah, the that's an interesting that. concept. I think for us, uh, many of us got m many whippings from our parents because <laughs> what we would do is break I'm our parents' stereo systems up and we would take that and use Did that really? as turntables. Wow, yeah. Right? But we didn't think or know that it would evolve to this extent That's right. and perhaps maybe eliminate jobs in the long run. In the long but, run. But you know what the real devil is? Not the Bronx people who, you know, Cool Herc and others mm -hmm. who created it, mm -hmm. you know, the real devil is the people who cut the funding for the music programs. Because if, 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 if we kept going and we let kids play music and all that kind of stuff, we might not have gotten, we might have gotten the same beats. I'll make but we might have had it with somebody playing it as opposed to somebody, you know. I'll connect the dots. Go ahead. You had a lot of groups back in the days. You had the Jackson Five, the Osmond yes, Brothers, I don't know if you remember, yeah. so Please many go, of them. You can go to the next group in the 70s, the OJs and all that. And it was fun to watch a bunch Teddy of... Teddy Pendergrass. Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> groups together. 
But after a while, they said, we don't need you. We just want the lead singer. What did that do to yeah, the group the and the audience the music, and ticket sales? Music. You know, listen, I think... Is this business? Is just... Is it... What is this all we, about? We go back to this, to this Bronx Music CD. I don't know which is the camera for it. And if you look at the music, this is Bronx Music. Mm -hmm. And we had... Uh, uh, Dave Valentin with jazz. We had salsa with Willie Colon. We had doo wop with Morrisania uh, a review. We had uh, a couple of rock bands. We had uh, where is it? Um, um, High Noon did uh, the Heist. Um, Crash Box did a song called mm. Radio. Those were all uh, rock and heavy metal bands. Uh, we had African Bambada on here. We had the Streets of. Uh, uh, Butch Barbellas did the Streets mm. of the Bronx. Uh, 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 it's called Butch Barbella Streets of the Bronx Band. Um, that's Bronx music. We had a, a folk blues guy, Amara, uh, was on here. That's the sound of the Bronx. And and taking away music and having to fight to put it back in schools is very frustrating. This must be in the hip hop museum. That would definitely. Ah, there be you in go. There. We'll, we'll talk to them about it. But you know, and we're going to move on to another question, a mm. rapid fire question. Join in. Call us. 718-715-1159. This is another big topic. I'm ready. Gary, remember, if you were at home yes. with your wife and family and you had this discussion, it's okay. I'm here. <laughs> Say what you feel. I'm a bold Don't guy. Hold back. I can take it. We're going to talk about reparations. Do okay. you feel that people of color deserve reparations? The, I mean, you know, it, it's almost a stupid question. Of course, of course. Uh, and part of it is, and, and I'm not big on determining exactly what would be fair. I will let others judge that. But part of that is for people to understand the history, mm -hmm. to understand, you know, to me, it's the same thing with music, it's the same thing with all these dialogues, same thing with interaction with cashiers. It's people learning about people and people accepting people and people understanding people's roots. To me, I, I, truthfully, I will let others determine the nature of the reparations, people who maybe experienced it firsthand more than I did. But to educate all of us about the history, not only reparations for African Americans, but for um, Native Americans or others who founded this country, who built this country, I use a bad word, slaved for this country mm -hmm. and slaved to develop. Of course they should, but as important as the reparations themselves is the dialogue to explain to our kids, to put it down in history. This is what happened. There's nothing we could do now mm -hmm. other than do better than we ever did before. And I think that's the beginning of the dialogue, and that's the dialogue that's important. Now. I think it's so important because I don't think... Um, I believe, first of all, we should have reparations. Mm -hmm. Let me start off by saying that. But I don't think that money should just be given, whether it's $20 million, whatever the amount is, and we go out into the community to start throwing out to the black people. That's not what It would be about. foolish. Right. I think it should be a think tank behind this. An, in an investment. And I think an investment. I think that every individual family that's receiving this money should be mandated they take about 5 to 10% and put that into some sort of fund where that can grow for families and generations to come. And you have black yeah. and people of color uh, working and people teach them how to fish. Don't just give people money where they're going into these stores, Macy's and Bloomingdale's and buying all this material stuff. And next thing you know, they're out of business overnight and to, they don't have any to money. Me, back to you know, square one. We always want to reinvent the wheel. The infrastructure for that exists. How about putting the money into the Schomburg Center in Harlem? Interesting. How, you know what I mean? How about putting that money into My Brother's Keeper that uh, Obama founded and say, then we're going to use that money to propagate education, to propagate understanding, to propagate culture. You know, mm -hmm. what can I tell you? And, and again, it doesn't matter whose culture, whether it's mine or yours or anybody else. To me, that is win, win, win for America. I, I want to just interject one yeah, thing sure, which just came up in the news, and it's very relevant. Um, when when it, the terrible tragedy that happened in Iran and mm -hmm. a plane went down. Oh, I heard about that. Right? I, right? I, I mean, just, just terrible. <clears throat> and I'm not talking about the politics of it. I'm talking about the revelation. Did you know, I mean, there were 62, I think they were Iranians, who were c Canadian citizens. Did you know that there was a sizable Iranian 
population in Canada. That just shows you the international nature of our world. Mm. If you continue to deny that we are all part of the same thing, it's not only America, but it's all over the world. And can we finally recognize that and embrace that? that that's, where I, that's where my mind is at. And, and you know, when I go and, and, and go out of the Bronx and maybe I'll go upstate or we'll travel down south and we'll go into Virginia or Maryland, I see, I see international people all the time. I see Asian people working in the, you know, who may own some of the road stops that you go by or working in little towns and developing little stores and small businesses. That is America. That is who we are. Of course, in the Bronx, we really are yeah. that. But that's my rap. But unfortunately, it's changing. People used to say United States of America. People are now saying these divided states of America. Oh, goodness gracious. And I will never say that. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, so many things are happening. Do you think there's going to be a racial war in this country? Mm -hmm. Are we heading in that direction? I hope that cooler heads prevail. And listen, there may be people who were upset that uh, Barack Obama became president, mm -hmm. and they uh, clearly there's resentment over a, a black man becoming president. I mean, <laughs> to me, it was one of the greatest moments in, in our history. There's no mm -hmm. question about it. And the way that he uh, conducted himself, and I'm not talking about policy, I'm talking about his, his, his manner, his profile, um, you you know it was a role model for all of us and, mm -hmm. and him and Michelle have been that way um, but it was so revolted by the the current president the current administration that it doesn't matter what Obama did he just wants to wipe his name off the books that's insane and the fact that the president's one of his closest advisors is an avowed white supremacist we, we, if, if we clear that out, we won't have the race war. If he gets reelected and they get to do more, because there's so much that they do that's obvious, and, and where I was going before about Obama is the lies about him. It's one thing mm. if you don't right, like right, him. Right, 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 absolutely. And it's one thing if you mm. don't like that he, uh, uh, you know, maybe some of his policies. I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to judge that for anybody else. But let's represent for who he was. Mm -hmm. And if something is good, and, and you may not, and frankly, I interviewed Elliot Engel, and he didn't like the Iran deal. He didn't like that deal. He said we should have a deal. He didn't happen to like that one. But the notion that it should be overturned, and now we have such chaos, makes no sense. So the answer to your question is, I certainly hope not. I think there's no question cooler heads can prevail. But the cooler heads have got to be uh, based in a fundamental fairness. President 45, you know, it's an, I don't mention his name, but I would say President 45, still, after the Central Park joggers were vindicated, they were found not guilty. Prior to that, <clears throat> Donald Trump took out a full-page ad yep. saying that these guys should basically be executed. These guys have been vindicated. They found not guilty. This man refuses to acknowledge. It's very sad. I mean, I, 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 there's no way to With explain With the person it. who actually did it came forward and said he did it, and they found that this the, the DNA, DNA evidence, matched, yeah. it matched. You know, listen, it's just as stupid may not be the right word, but it's just as stupid as saying that Barack Obama was not an, an American or was yeah. not born here. Or, you know, I, 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 so I don't know what to say. You, you can't, it's one thing to accept the policies or understand the policies. It's another thing to, uh, to lie about what happened. You know? Do you feel that there might be some white Caucasian people might say, Gary, why are you defending these black people? Why are you so <laughs> sensitive about them? Because we're brothers and sisters, <laughs> man. What are you, nuts? Wait, why? Why? Because they're my mm. neighbors. Because mm. they're my neighbors. Okay. They're the people I talk to. They're the people I interact with. Mm. What am I going to do, hate people? Mm. Are you out of your mind? Mm. I mean, not you, of course. But, but you know, anybody, what, you know, and frankly, I'm Jewish. Mm. I would certainly hope that, that you're not really thrilled about the anti-Semitism and, and Jews getting attacked. I'm, I'm assuming that that's not on your list of, of, of good things, right? Well, you would defend that right also, you're right? Absolutely. Of course. So, so yeah, fairness, fairness is what it is. People and, uh, are people. And yes. if you're obeying Almighty God, I don't know if you believe him, I don't want to put you it's on the spot. It's a different faith from yours. Yeah. But for me, he teaches us how to love one another. Now, we've been through a lot. 
We can't deny that. But that's his calling and his judging to determine what. You know how I see that, Clyde? Because we're of different backgrounds, different okay. faiths, which is the beauty of the Bronx, obviously, mm -hmm. is it um, doesn't matter to me how you get there, but you got, you're there. And I'm there too, mm -hmm. and that's what matters. Is that we both see that that end, and that that's what matters. How we got there, but if we never get there, that's where I have a problem. Another question, rapid fire. Go ahead. Parents gave up custody of their children to help them get financial aid. Are we talking about the the college scandal? Yes. Is that what we're talking? Well, about? we're we're going to segue into that, but I'm Explain just talking to me in what general. You're referring to. Basically, parents have a hard time getting financial assistance to get their children into college. So they would give up. So the child would then be, be eligible to get financial aid because they, you know, in other words, they, they you know. They gave uh, it to this, another this family is, member my, or a friend. Yeah, this is my attitude. It's like somebody who goes and who lives in the Bronx and registers their car in New Jersey. You know, mm. they do that to save a little mm. money. So. Yeah, it's not right. But you're talking about children giving up their custodial rights. I would never do that. I would never do that. I would never do anything like that. And I would, um, and on, uh, having said that, I do have sympathy for people who mm -hmm. are working so hard and say, look, all I ever wanted is for my child to get that aid. And if they do it in maybe in some legal, uh, legal paper, um, but still raise their children, I'm not killing them for it. I, fraud is not a good thing. I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't do it. I didn't do it to get my own kids through college. Uh, and I'm still paying more loans than anybody ever wants to think about. But um, I, so on twofold, yeah, I'm not happy about it. Number two, um, I, I do have, I have sympathy for people. People's lives are very hard, you know? And, and they want so much. Mm -hmm. Look at it from another way. How, um, how badly they want that for their kids. It's, a, it's an expression of love in another mm -hmm. way. Breaking the law, breaking the rules, fraud, that's tough, you know. But I do have sympathy for people. I, I, I love mothers and fathers. Can I, can I just tell you a crazy story? I live on the 14th floor of my mm -hmm. building, and my wife, Suzanne, and I have lived there for many years. We have neighbors who moved in recently, and they have the two cutest little girls I have ever seen in my life. And, and I just want to shout out to them, to uh, Victoria and Sophia. Oh, wonderful. Because when I see them in the, in the elevator, we have a really slow mm -hmm. elevator, so we ride all the way up. Mm -hmm. It's like a party in the elevator with these two kids. That, that, that's the nature of the Bronx. That's what I think about. And, and so if, they, if yeah. they were to do something improper, even illegal, to make sure, that, because they have no other way, of, and I don't know what their family is, or you know, God willing, they just do great. Um, but if they did that because they care about those kids and they want those kids to succeed, I love those kids, man. What about, <laughs> hey, what this, can I tell you? What about the scandal? These famous celebrities oh. that oh. have oh. millions Is that an millions answer of for dollars <laughs> paying for their children's education. They, they, they probably don't have to attend school. They just give them a one check. They're done. So they have here's, their degree here's, on the wall. This has that. to be revalued. Here's how I view that, and it goes back to what you call him President 45. When when he got elected, the, there were things that he said and did that were like, you got to be kidding me. And as this has unfolded over the last three years, there's actually a syndicate of these rich, frankly, white people who have a whole club and a whole way of life that we never knew about. Mm. Robert Kraft, the, the owner of the, of the Patriots, being caught with an underage Asian mm -hmm. woman in, in a, in a mm -hmm. flop house, and then they all let him off. You know, um, uh, what's the name? Weinstein. Of, uh, Harvey, Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein. What's the name of that guy who allegedly killed himself in jail, who was a, a sexual predator for, I forget his, year, forget his name. Yeah, I, I know who you're talking about. I just forgot his name. Yeah. Slipped my mind. But, but they have a whole culture of this. Mm -hmm. So when those, when, when those um, um, actors and those well-known people, well-to-do people cut a scam, they're all for it. They're, they're all in on it. And we didn't know. We yeah. didn't know, and until now, I was like, wait a minute, this is not just President Trump being a little different. This is not, you know, Harvey Weinstein being really messed up. This is a whole culture. What should we do with elected officials that are <laughs> not doing their jobs? They're not being responsible. Um, Vote them out. We know that 
what were most politicians doing before they became politicians? Some of them were drug dealers. Some really? of them were pimps. They were three card molly hustlers. As they got older, they realized I, that they that, had to change, and this is why I'm giving you some Im important information. They had to change the game. As they realized they were getting older, they couldn't stand out on the street corners anymore, so they put on a suit and tie and dressed it up, and now they're in the game of politics, and this is the way they So th this combat. goes back to our dialogue from a little while ago about term limits. So those are the people who you really wanted to term limit out because they got these permanent jobs mm -hmm. and they're not doing their jobs. Listen, I, I interview almost all the politicians in the Bronx and I could tell you who is and who is not doing their job. The only thing to do now is <clears throat> get somebody on the ballot and vote them out. But it's tough because of the political structures in the Bronx. I know what they are. I mean, we know that there's a party that controls a lot. Uh, but, you know, we've had some movement. I mean, you know. Well, I, I, for I, don't my have, faith, I don't have an easy answer there is for a, I do. There's an almighty God, and he's watching. He said, those that finish last shall finish first, and those that finish start first shall finish last. There's a judgment. I see a lot of buildings being put up in the Bronx. I think that the foundation is getting so weak in the Bronx. It's nice that we are building. Gentrification is starting to set in. I. It's nice that we're putting up these buildings, but our the poor people, can they afford to live Here in these go. places? Because mm -hmm. they give you something, a sound bite, and once they got you hooked, there's no leverage for these people to move in. It's um, a game. It, here's, a, here's an interesting conflict, which you, you will understand. So the Hip Hop Museum is going to be in one of those projects, is going to be in the basement of the Bronx Point project right down there by, by the Harlem River. Um, I, I don't want to give his name, but I did talk to one of the uh, originators of hip hop and said, how do you feel about that? And you know what he said to me? Um, and, and the reason I won't give his name is because it was a private conversation and I don't want to mm -hmm. uh, say who it was. He said, I don't mind gentrification because I want Bronx people who never had the opportunity to see how other people, that you can live a different way to do that, the, 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 to me, the, the issue is displacement. That if you do that, and then it ends up pricing out all the people who built the borough, that's not a see, good thing. See, that way of thinking, they may get a little bit of money on the side, eventually it's going to affect all of us. Most of the time, people oftentimes say, as long as that happens over there, it doesn't bother me, as long as it doesn't no, no, affect it's, me. It's happening right in the center of uh, the South Bronx, back. there's no question about it. Prices are going way up. There are many new uh, developments. But um, th to me, the displacement uh, is, is the thing. I don't have an answer for this, but I'll ask you the question. And this is the question that has to be dealt with. How do you develop the Bronx, bring money in from the outside, uh, without displacing people, without affecting that people. that That's a question. In other words, you want people who are going to come in right. and shop in our stores right. and go to our local restaurants right. and do all that with money to pay, to pay so we can build up, you know? Absolutely. You, you want that in the Bronx, but you don't want the rents to go up so that people who have lived here and worked and raised their families and done everything they needed to do all of a sudden have no place to go. That's not a good thing. And this is important. This is things that I would address with these elected officials because Comes eventually, every time I talk to one. <laughs> eventually they are building and they're doing what they have to do to secure their families but there's going to be a time where God is going to rain on their parade. They won't be able to eat, sleep, and drink merry. What you do to others, what you reap, comes back. Mm -hmm. And some may feel, well, I'll deal with that when the time comes. But the penalty is going to be swift. Do you think man has the technology to make it rain or make it snow? Well, or probably, but I hope not, because then that would be messing with... Um, uh, with nature a little too much. Well, they're house. messing with nature now. Well, I, I understand they're designing, that. That's what I'm saying. They're designing right now in China for men to get pregnant. Are you for that? <laughs> well, it's not going to be... And get their menstrual cycle. It's not going to be a 65-year-old man at, at that point, so I'm out. Uh, I, it sounds pretty crazy to me. That's all I'm saying. That, that, that's pretty far out. I, I really think that we got bigger problems than worry about. It's Let so... It may not be a good trend, but 
uh, what can I tell you? I don't have a reaction to that. It's pretty crazy. What do you think in terms of? I'm trying, Clyde. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Rapid fire questions. You can call in these last seven minutes of the show. 718-715. Four minutes. 718-715-1159. Join us. We have Gary Axelbank here in the studio. Yep. You know, I don't want to forget about somebody. I didn't yep. know you had a son, Evans Axelbank from Tampa, Florida, who's a reporter. Do tell us a little bit about him. Well, Evan um, uh, grew up in the Bronx, obviously. Um, he's my son. And by the way, I have a daughter, Sean, who's a fitness instructor in Manhattan. We're very proud of her as well. We don't, you never want to favor mm -hmm. one over the other, and I don't. Um, but Evan is a um, news reporter. Many, many, many years ago, I was a producer at Channel 4. And he was looking for a, a project in uh, junior high school. Mm -hmm. uh, like he had to interview somebody. I said, well, why don't you come down to the station? I'll, so I introduced him to Joe Avalar, who was a reporter there. Mm -hmm. And he said he walked in, he talked to that guy, and he said, now I know what I want to do for the rest of my life. Interesting. And so he really worked very hard. Ithaca College, worked at uh, stations up in um, Ithaca, Syracuse, Rochester. Then I got a job in, in West Palm, Florida. And now Tampa is the number 11 market in uh, America, and I'm very proud. He's a, he's a leading reporter uh, in Tampa, Florida, and he's very good. He, and, and I'll tell you now, at this point in our lives, he and I talk just about every day about, uh, about things like this. I got a, a new we, TV We'll experience. eventually continue this conversation. We'll bring him in, and maybe we'll have him on Skype. Quick question, rapid-fire question. This country is about $22 trillion in debt. <laughs> Now, I listen to Jay Sheculo, I listen to the White Ring Media, I listen to um, Lish, Rush, Rush Limbaugh. Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, uh, uh, what's this other guy's name, I forget, he just slips my mind, but he was talking in terms of the country is going into so much debt that they will, the government will be, will be able to go into your personal bank account on your savings and take that money without your permission and use it to pay off this debt. That's baloney. You that's, don't think this can happen? I'll give you two, two sides of that. That's fear-mongering. That, I don't think mm. that's going to happen. That's fear-mongering. And the re, what's crazy... Kevin McCullough brought that up. Okay, what, what's, to me, what, what's, that's fear-mongering. And that, that is, um, frankly, right-wing people spreading fear about something they don't really have. Because they'll, they'll talk about Social Security being the same thing. And that's a you know we, that's a whole other debate, but um, uh, uh, it, it used to be uh, the GOP used to be dead set that they hated all the this expenditures by Democrats because they said it's going to increase the deficit. Well, now the deficit has increased under this president more than it ever has, and now all of a sudden uh, deficit, Congress is uh, printing up money out of right. thin air like it's that's going right. out of Congress. And, they, and, and they'll scare people and say the government's coming into your pocket. Look, They're telling you, us to hold on to gold. The, 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 if, the states with high taxes, if you compare it to states with low taxes, go look at their education systems in those states. They can't afford to pay for schools. They can't afford to, and, and those schools are the lowest performing schools in the nation. Okay. That's what your taxes do. They keep your streets clean. They pay for your cops. Gary, let us know how we can reach you. We're about to wrap it up this show right now. We're coming to a end. How can they reach you, Gary? Uh, really you, could, you could send an email to Bronxnet, Bronx Talk at bronxnet.org. Uh, you could send an email to gaxinthebronx at gmail.com. Thank you. And I'm DJ. Well, that's it. Are we done? Your voice. I can talk forever, I'm man. I'm Cool Clyde. And I want to thank you for joining us on this broadcast. And we look forward to seeing you in another exciting show. Your Thank voice. you for joining us. Thank you for joining me on my broadcast, Gary Axel. Thank you. I appreciate it. Wonderful. I could talk forever. <laughs>